Roman Catholicism is a Christian church that has been the decisive spiritual force in the history of Western Orthodoxy and Protestantism. It is one of the three major branches of Christianity. The Roman Catholic Church traced its history to Jesus Christ and the Apostles. Over the course of centuries, it developed a highly sophisticated theology and an elaborate organizational structure headed by the oldest continuing absolute monarchy in the world. The number of Roman Catholics in the world, nearly 1.1 billion, is greater than that of nearly all other religious traditions. There are more Roman Catholics than all other Christians combined and more Roman Catholic than the Buddhists or Hindus. Although there are more Muslims than Roman Catholic, the number of Roman Catholics is greater than that of the individual traditions of Sunni Islam. So welcome to the World History Documentary Series. In this episode, we are going to look back how the themes and practices of Catholicism brought back this, its empowerment during the 16th century and how powerful the Catholic Church took to oppose and drop the Protestantism. Are you ready? Let's find out if you are ready. Before we talk about the Catholic Counter-Reformation, let's briefly store and refresh our thoughts about the ideas and themes about Catholicism. Catholicism compromises the beliefs and practices of the Roman Catholic Church. It stands under the authority of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope is led by him, and Bishop Juan held to him. Through ordination, successor of Peter and the Apostles, doctrine and sacraments are administered by the hierarchy of our solution, Bishop, Priest, and Deacons. A successor to Peter, the Pope was considered the vicar of Christ. Roman Catholics believed the Church to be the only one Catholic and Apostolic Church, possessing all the properties of the one true Church of the Christ. The center of Roman Catholic worship is the celebration of the Mass, the Eucharist, which is the commemoration of Christ's sacrificial death and resurrection. Other sacraments are baptism, confirmation, penance, anointing of the sick, matrimony, and the holy orders. The Virgin Mary and the other saints and their reliefs are venerated and prayers are made to them to intercede with God, in whose presence they are believed to dwell. Catholicism and Protestantism both possess a significant role in the history of Catholic Reformation. Let's find out the differences between those two Christian sects. Catholics and Protestants both are Christians. They are just two different kinds of sects or branches. Both of them have their own beliefs, ideologies, and differences. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. as a branch started in the 16th century after the Reformation movement. Second, Catholics believe in the authority of the popes and are the highest authority after Jesus Christ, whereas Protestants do not believe in the path of authority. For them, Jesus is their one and only. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Four Catholics worship Mary as the Divine Mother of Christ, as well as the Queen of Heaven, whereas Protestants worship Mary as the only Mother of Christ. Lee favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Faith Catholics believe that the wine and bread they consume during the Mass is actually Jesus, whereas Protestants think that the bread and wine are the only symbol for Christ. Theory and religion go hand in hand, and it's been a very important factor for ages. The fact that they are both Christians, but yet so different and so intricate. This shows us that our world is actually full of history and diversity. Everything and everyone have their own unique of living and functioning. Counter-Reformation, also called Catholic Reformation or Catholic Revival, in the history of Christianity, the Roman Catholic efforts directed in the 16th and early 17th centuries both against the Protestant Reformation and toward internal renewal. The Roman Catholic Church responded to the Protestant challenge by purging itself of the abuses and abuivities that had opened the way to revolt and the mark or embark upon recovery of schematic branches of Western Christianity with mixed success. The Counter-Reformation took place during roughly the same period as Protestant Reformation, actually beginning shortly before Martin Luther's act of nailing the 95 Theses to the door of Gast Church in 1517. Recant these books. I will do nothing but add strength to tyranny and open not just the windows, but also the doors to this great ungodliness. He has condemned himself. In the third group, I have written against private persons and individuals who uphold Roman tyranny and have attacked my own efforts to encourage piety to Christ. Churches when many followers, millions remained true to Catholicism. Helping Catholics to remain loyal was a movement within the Catholic Church to reform itself. This movement is now known as the Catholic Reformation. Historians would refer to it as the Counter Reformation. Important leaders in this movement were reformers such as Ignatius of Loyola, who founded new religious orders, and two popes, Paul III and Paul IV who took action to reform and renew the church from within. Ignatius grew up in his father's castle in Loyola, Spain. The great turning point in his life came in in 1521 when he was injured in a war. While recovering, he thought about his past sins and about the life of Jesus. His daily devotions, he believed, cleans his soul. In 1522, Ignatius began writing a book called The Spiritual Exercises that laid out our day-by-day -day plan of meditation, prayer, and study. In it, he compared the spiritual and physical exercise. For the next 18 years, Ignatius gathered followers. In 1540, the Pope created a religious order for his followers called the Society of Jesus. Members were called Jesuits. The Jesuits focused on three activities. 
First, they founded superb schools throughout Europe. All Jesuit teachers were well trained in both classical studies and theology. The Jesuit second mission was to convert non-Christians to Catholicism. So, they sent out missionaries around the world. Their third goal was to stop the spread of Protestantism. The zeal of the Jesuits overcame the drift toward Protestantism in Poland and Southern Germany. From 1545 to 1563 at the Council of Trent, Catholic bishop and cardinals agreed on several doctrines. First, church interpretation of the Bible was final. Any Christian who substituted his or her own interpretation was a heretic. Second, Christian needed faith and good works for salvation. They were not saved by faith alone, as Luther argued. I cannot renounce all of my works because they are not all the same. First are those books in which I have described Christian faith and life so simply that even my opponents have admitted that these works are useful. Third, the Bible and the church tradition were equally powerful authorities for guiding Christian life. Fourth, indulgences were valid expression of faith, but the false selling of indulgences was banned. The next pope, Paul IV, vigorously carried out the council decrees. In 1559, he had officials throw up a list of books considered dangerous to the Catholic faith. The list was known as the Index of Forbidden Books. Catholic bishops throughout Europe were ordered to gather up all offensive books, including Protestant Bibles, and burn them in bonfires. In Venice alone, followers burned 10,000 books in one day. Tonight, your Pope. The Vicar of Christ sends you a gift, a gift to save you from such fires. Reformation had an ending impact. Through its religious, social and political effects, the Reformation set the stage for the modern world. It also ended the Christian unity of Europe and left it culturally divided religion. Social effects of the Reformation. Despite religious wars and persecution, Protestant churches flourished in new denominations developed. The Roman Catholic Church itself became more unified as a result of the reforms started at the Council of Trent. Both Catholics and Protestants gave more emphasis to the role of education in promoting their beliefs. This led to the founding of parish schools and new colleges and universities throughout Europe. moral and political authority declared individual monarchs and state gain power. This leads to the development of modern nations. The state and the 1600 rulers of nation state would seek more power for themselves and their countries through warfare, exploration, and expansion. There is a very good and important reason why we now have so many different Christian denominations. Up until the early 16th century, the Roman Catholic Church dominated the spiritual life of Europe. Then, Martin Luther and his allies in the Pro Protestant Reformation broke away from Catholicism. They translated the Bible into the language of the people. They made the case that every believer has the right to read the scriptures for himself or herself. The result was veritable explosions of new ideas and conflicting opinions about the interpretations of various biblical passages. There are both positive and negative aspects to the situation at this exist today. It's bad because Jesus indicated very clearly that he wanted his followers to be one as he stated in John chapter 17 verse 23. 
but it also good because it fosters honest discussion and open dialogue about the deeper meaning of the Bible and the best way to live the Christian life. And when it comes to something as important as understanding God's word, two heads are always better than one. As scripture says, in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14. I am Teacher Mark. I am Teacher Mercy. I am Teacher Rodney. I am Teacher Ivy. I am Teacher Mati. And I am Teacher Angela. And this is the World History 2 series featuring the Catholic Reformation.